Benjamin Graham is known as the father of value investing. He employed and mentored Warren Buffett for years and wrote some of the most important books on value investing ever, such as Security Analysis and my personal favorite investing book, The Intelligent Investor. And in the book, The Intelligent Investor, Benjamin Graham lays out a formula for calculating the intrinsic value of a stock. So in this video, I'm going to be taking you step by step on how to perform this valuation and going more in depth into how this valuation model works. And calculating the intrinsic value of a stock is so, so important because it lets you know how much a stock is actually worth. And you can see right here, the original formula from his book, Security Analysis, is listed right here. And it says intrinsic value is equal to earnings per share multiplied by 8.5 plus 2g and you can see a little bit of an explanation right here but since then this formula has actually been updated and if we jump over we can see this revised formula is including a required rate of return so here is the updated formula right there but since then this formula has actually been revised one more time so if we jump over here here is the actual formula we're going to use in this video to calculate intrinsic value so let's go ahead and jump into it and i'll start explaining what some of these variables mean and how we can start performing this valuation so let's go ahead and come down here in our spreadsheet and again, if you'd like to be able to download this spreadsheet or any of my other spreadsheets in Google Sheets, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. But I'm just going to come up here and let's go ahead and merge these cells. And I'm just going to type in grams valuation and I'll hit enter. Let's go ahead and give this some borders. And now we want to start listing off some of the variables that we need to perform this valuation model. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug in stock right here so we can see what company we are performing this valuation. You can see right here, we're going to need our earnings per share. So let's go ahead and plug in EPS. Then we need the price to earnings of a company with no growth, which is going to be this number right here. So let's just go ahead and type that in. We'll type in PE of company with no growth. And we'll come down here. And the next thing we need is our growth rate projection. So I'll just come here and type growth rate projection. And let's go ahead and come down here. And now we're just going to plug in 1G. And that's just our growth rate multiplier. Um, and I'll come back and talk about that just a little bit more later in the video. Now, the next thing we need is the average yield on AAA corporate bonds. And this formula is always going to be 4.4 for this number. So let's go ahead and just list that off average yield of triple A corporate bond. And if we come down here, the last thing we need is going to be Y and that's going to be the current yield on triple A corporate bonds. And so now we have all the variables we need to actually calculate intrinsic value. So I'll go ahead and come down here. So again, that final number we're going to work towards is going to be right here. And I'll hit enter. So now we need to start plugging in our variables. Let's go ahead and pick in a company that we want to start analyzing. Let's say for this scenario, we want to look at a company I'm actually invested in, and that is Caterpillar, stock ticker C18. It's currently trading at $232.20. So using Graham's formula, we want to see if at its current price, it's a good company to consider buying. So let's go ahead and jump back over to our spreadsheet. And right here, I'm just going to go ahead and plug in the stock ticker so we know what company we are performing this analysis on. So now we have Caterpillar plugged in right here, and we need to start pulling in these variables. And if you're working in Google Sheets, there's actually a couple of different ways you can automate this valuation where it becomes really easy to perform. So if I come here and click equals and type out Google Finance, and we'll come right here and click on Caterpillar stock ticker, do a comma, and in quotations, we're just going to type in EPS, and we'll close the quotations and parentheses and hit enter. And you can see the earnings per share for Caterpillar is going to automatically be loaded in. And again, this is automated now. So let's say I wanted to look at Microsoft. I could plug in their stock ticker and hit enter. And their earnings per share will automatically show up. Same thing for pretty much any US based stock right here. So let's go ahead and come here and plug in Caterpillar. Of course, if you want, you don't have to use this formula. If you're working in Excel, you can simply just look up what the earnings per share for Caterpillar is right here. But if we come down here, now we need the price to earnings of a company with no growth. And in Benjamin Graham's formula, he has seven listed off. So this is going to remain seven. So all we need to do is plug in seven right here. And now you can see we have plus 1G. So essentially 1G right here, all we need to do is list 
one and that's going to be our growth rate multiplier but now we need our growth rate projection and this is going to be a really important metric for this valuation model because you need to project how the company is going to grow in the future so there's definitely a few different things you're going to want to do you're going to want to look at what analyst growth rate projections are you're going to want to do your own research as well to come up with a growth rate and also look at how their industry is performing and the projected growth of their industry but if you want to keep things simple one of the things you can do is if you just jump over to yahoo finance we'll come up here and plug in caterpillar stock ticker and I'll click this right here. If we come to here and click on analysis, once we have this plugged in and scroll all the way down, you can see we have a five-year growth rate projection for Caterpillar. So let's say for this scenario, we see 13.22 growth rate projection. Let's say we do, let's say we do some of our own research as well on this. And after looking at the industry expectations, analyst expectations, um, we feel like a growth rate of 12 is going to be a little more accurate. So we'll go ahead and plug in 12 right here. So now we just need our average yield on AAA corporate bonds and the current yield on corporate bonds as well. And that's going to be AAA corporate bonds as well. Um, so for the average yield, you can see right here, we already have 4.4 listed off. So all I need to do is plug in 4.4 and now we need the current yield on AAA corporate bonds. Let's go ahead and plug in AAA right here, AAA corporate bonds. And so the website you can go to to pull this in is going to be Y charts. I think this is a really good website to pull in this data. And you can see once you Google this, you can see right here the current yield on AAA corporate bonds as of today is sitting at 4.86. And this is actually a number that changes frequently. You can see on a day to day basis, we're getting updates on what this number is. And over the past year, you can see it's really been trending upwards. If we look at the past three years, really trending upwards as well about three years ago you can see we're sitting at around 1.6 all the way up to around two right here but at the time of this video 4.86 we'll talk about this more in just a moment let's go ahead and plug in 4.86 so now we have all the data we need to perform our valuations so let's go ahead and just add some outer borders to this number here to make everything look a little bit cleaner and now let's start plugging in our formula into our spreadsheet so what i'm going to do is I'll come right here and I'm gonna merge these cells. We'll see if we can highlight them both. I'll merge them. So we're gonna come here and plug in our equals. And you can see right here, the first thing we need is our earnings per share. So I'll come right here and I'll click on earnings per share. And then we are gonna multiply this and then open up our parentheses, which you can see right here. And we're gonna come here and click on our seven, which is the price to earnings of a company with no growth. But then we need to add our growth rate projection. So then I'll do plus and in parentheses again, we're gonna come down here and take our one G and multiply that by our growth rate projection, which you can see right here. So I'll close this parentheses and I'll close another parentheses. And now we need to multiply this again and so we're gonna do this symbol here and we're gonna multiply that by 4.4, which is the average yield on AAA corporate bonds. So then I'm going to close off that as well. And what I need to do, it looks like I need to add parentheses here. So once I have this, we then need to divide everything by our current yield on AAA corporate bonds. So I'll come to the end of this formula. We'll do divided by the current yield on AAA corporate bonds. So you can see, it looks long in advance, but essentially all we're doing is plugging in these variables we have right here. So when I hit enter, you can see we come to an intrinsic value of $217.42 per share. Let's go ahead and make that a dollar sign. We'll make that a little bit larger. So now we need to understand better how this number here is affected by these different variables. So let's go ahead and play with this for a second. Let's say our growth rate projection for Caterpillar is 15. I'll plug this in and you can see our intrinsic value jumps up to $251 per share. Let's say we come to a lower growth rate projection of around seven, I'll plug that in. And all of a sudden our intrinsic value is $160.21 per share. Now earnings per share is obviously gonna be very important in this scenario as well. Caterpillar has pretty solid earnings per share, so that's definitely gonna help this valuation model. But let's go ahead and plug in 12 for our growth rate projection again as well. Now let's compare this to the current trading price of the company. If we come right here, just type in current price, and again, using our Google Finance formula, we can easily pull in the current price for Caterpillar if we click on it here and hit enter. We can see current trading price for Caterpillar, $232 per share. I'll go ahead and blow that up to make it a little bit larger. So our current trading price is above our intrinsic value. So 
What, what does this mean? Well, essentially, it looks like according to Graham's valuation, Caterpillar is currently a little bit overvalued. Now, something we need to talk about more is the current yield on AAA corporate bonds. Like I already mentioned, we can see here the number has really been climbing higher and higher. Well, let's say we perform this valuation with the same metrics. But back in July of 2021, when the current yield on AAA corporate bonds was around 1.76. Let's jump back over to our spreadsheet and plug in 1.76 and hit enter. And you can see your intrinsic value jumps all the way up to $600.40 per share. So the current yield on AAA corporate bonds plays a major role in the intrinsic value you come to for the grams valuation really in general. So let's say, let's say we come to three for the current yield on AAA corporate bonds at the time of this video. Our intrinsic value is $352 and the current trading price is $232 per share. Now you may think that this valuation model is finished since it's pretty clear that our intrinsic value is higher than our current trading price, but there's actually one more step that Benjamin Graham recommends we take and that's applying a margin of safety. So let's go ahead and go through that process as well. And essentially that's gonna tell us if it's safe to buy the stock with its intrinsic value being higher than the current trading price. So if we come down here a little bit lower, let's go ahead and list off our current price. And again, we'll use that Google Finance function once again to pull that in. So we can see current trading price again lower than that intrinsic value. The next thing we need to do is we want our margin of safety. So let's go ahead and come here and plug this in. And I have a video on how to apply a margin of safety if you wanna see a little more in depth how this works, and I'll put a link to that in the description. But essentially this number here is gonna be something we have to decide for ourselves. If we're more aggressive with our investments, maybe we'll want a lower margin of safety such as five or 10%. But if we're much more conservative investors, typically you're gonna want a margin of safety of 20 to 30%. So let's say in this scenario, we want a 20% margin of safety. So I'm gonna plug in 0.2 right here and you can list this off as a percentage as well if you want. And the final thing we're gonna need is to see our acceptable buy price. And then below that, we're gonna want a buy or sell signal. And for our acceptable buy price, we're gonna do equals, and we are going to do one, in parentheses, one minus our margin of safety right here. So now we have that. What we need to do is we are going to multiply that by the intrinsic value that we came to. So we'll come here and hit enter and you can see we're going to get a percentage. So we do need to adjust this to a dollar and our acceptable buy price for this company is $281.79. Again, currently higher than that current trading price. Let's go ahead and get our buy or sell signal. All we need to do is use equals and we'll do an if statement right here. And we're going to say if our acceptable buy price is greater than the current trading price for the company. We'll do comma, we want this to say buy in quotations and then comma, if not, we want it to say sell. And I'll hit enter. So you can see in this scenario, we are getting a signal to buy this company. So let's go ahead and test out our finished formula we have right here. Let's say that we wanna perform a stock analysis on Microsoft. We can just plug in Microsoft right here you can see our earnings per share is automatically pulled in. Let's say our growth rate projection for Microsoft is 15. And at the time, the current yield on AAA corporate bonds is 3.3. I'll hit enter. You can see based upon this, our intrinsic value is $263 per share, but the current trading price for the company is 250. So let's apply our margin of safety of 10%. I'll hit enter. Based upon that, our acceptable buy price is $237 per share. So we are getting a signal to not buy the company at its current trading price. So there you go. That is how you perform Graham's valuation. This is a really nice valuation model to learn how to perform because it's gonna help you calculate intrinsic value and decide when you should be buying or selling a stock. Now, I think intrinsic value and valuation is extremely important, which is one of the reasons that I've made my automated stock valuation spreadsheet in Google Sheets. And this has multiple valuations in it and a stock screener as well. So basically here's how it works. You can come up here and plug in the stock ticker for any company and all this data is gonna automatically load in. So let's say we wanna look at Caterpillar again. I just plug in the stock ticker and hit enter. You can see we have our 365 day change. We have our business metrics. We have our dividend data. We have moving averages and a lot of other really important metrics that I typically like to look at. But then we also have Graham's valuation listed, a discounted cash flow model, a multiples valuation, a dividend discount model, and all of this rolls into our output tab where we can see four different valuation models.
see the four of them average together, and we can get our buy or sell signal and our acceptable buy price. If you'd like to see more about how this spreadsheet works, then you can watch the video that I'll have linked in the description. And if you'd like to be able to download it, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. So there you go. That's how you perform a valuation model using Benjamin Graham's valuation. So that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.